Guys, you go on, come in, brother. Do you mind if we put this on film, please? Yeah. Yes, you do mind, or yes, we can? Sorry, you, can, you can. Go on, what's your question, brother? I, I don't have a question. I just want to say, like, thank you so much for all you've done. Um, it's been a great help to my friends, especially. Um, I, so I actually ran into um, Shamsi maybe two years ago. Right. Didn't know anything about his art. So I'm curious, um, you know, find out more about him. So I actually went up to one of his stands. Yeah. Uh, and didn't have a great conversation. Well, it was quite discouraging for me. Because you know, I didn't know much about um, you know, how to defend my cult and kind of faith. Yeah. Like, I was just Christian for a decent amount of time, but um, he was, you know, very for God. Trinity's wrong, life yeah. is corrupted, all yeah. that stuff. Um, and then I I basically tried to find him online to see like if he's you know what, what stuff he's done. Yeah. I'm not finding your videos. I'm not basically every single so good video. Oh well, <laughs> thank you so much. So so here's here's the thing, just firstly Soko Films is not my channel. My yeah. channel is Bob of Speaker's Corner. Okay. I, I work with JC and Soko Films. But let's, let's just address this, because there's a real problem in the church. Okay. And which, which cameras are on these two? They're, they're, come, come in, brother. What's your name? Lawrence. Lawrence. So Lawrence is an example of a real problem in the church, which is that we are not training Christians how to defend their faith. Okay. And, and the reality is we're sending Christians into the world to talk about Jesus but we're not training Christians how to defend their claims when other people come back with smart arguments about why you shouldn't believe in Jesus. And, and the fact of the matter is, if your fellowship is not teaching apologetics, your fellowship is part of the problem that the church is suffering. And, and I want you to challenge your fellowships about the importance of apologetics right. and demand from your pastors that they do train in apologetics. You can always reach out to me if you want to and I'll come and teach your church how to do apologetics. Same with you and you guys who are Christians. Go to your churches and say, I know a guy who can teach us apologetics and I'll come and do so. Yeah. Any other questions or comments, bro? Um, there's like a couple questions. Are you wanting to ask a question, sister? Come in. Okay, they're filming me, so you could ask a question from there. Go on. Don't, don't lean in because we're keeping you off yeah, camera. I was going to say, I used to be a Christian, but part of what you said is part of why I left because I felt like the church didn't care about me. Yeah. They didn't care what I believed. Like, yeah. they sincerely did not care what I believed. I'd say something like, um, how, is God, how is the devil um, the opposite of God when God can't have an opposite or an equal? Yeah. Things like that. they will be like, just believe it. Like, they did not care what I believed. Yeah. Now I'm Muslim, no one really cares from the church. Like, my parents don't care, no one cares, I've done this part happily. Yeah. So I do feel like you're right in saying that the church is lazy yeah. in, sense, in terms of defending its religion. But I do feel like even if you did defend your religion, it still wouldn't hold up. Obviously I'm saying that because yeah. I'm Muslim now, but I do feel like the church has become lazy and it doesn't represent Christianity. Like when I look at the Bible and I look at church, I'm not seeing the correlation sometimes. Yeah, so, so let me reply to that sister because it's a fair comment. And me and you were in total agreement. Like, you, you know, we've, we've lost a sister here okay. precisely because, precisely because the church isn't teaching apologetics. We've lost a sister here precisely because the church doesn't care to defend its borders, to look after those who are on the edges of the faith or to learn from when it loses someone to think to itself, we need to shut down these roots. And my invitation to you, sister, is, you know, obviously you made a decision based upon the information you had at hand at the time. And I respect that decision. I don't blame you for entering into something that seemed well defended and leaving something that you thought was not well defended. I have no judgment of you at all. However, what I would say to you is that there is the opportunity to speak to learned Christians like myself and to go over again all the reasons why you initially left the Christian faith to see if that decision back then, whenever it was, is a valid one and whether you should reconsider to re-enter the faith and join a church where they actually do teach apologetics and where they do care about what you believe because those churches do exist and I can introduce you to them. So my invitation to your sister is, you know, 
like I'm not I'm not trying to force you to become a, a Christian or I, I respect the decision that you made and I understand your reasons for making it but where there is opportunity to learn it can't hurt you to learn yeah. you know My go on yeah Yeah, and, and, like that is lazy and, and, and my point to you is, sister, right? If you and me were to sit down and to go over your questions, I assure you, you would not be getting lazy answers from me. The problem is, now that you've identified yourself as a Muslim woman, I can't, I won't be able to have a conversation with you that doesn't get interrupted. But if you want to, I am happy to talk with you over Skype, talk with you through email correspondence, or, or speak to you on Zoom and to go through these issues so that you can have, so you can see that actually Christianity does stand up to criticism because her Catholic uncle was unable to answer, her Catholic stepdad was unable to give solid answers. Yeah, and he has a degree because the Catholic Church isn't teaching. Sister, 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 sister. So this is what I'm talking about. I can now, You've got to make the decision to exclude him from the conversation, otherwise he'll just interrupt us continuously. So it's up to you. I'm not going to force you to do anything. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so my my point to you is. Yeah. So my so my point to you is, sister, is that I've I, I, just this week I received an email from a Christian who left Christianity, became a Muslim, and watched my videos on Soko Films and has returned to the Christian faith. Because just like you, the answers that he didn't get in his church and from his family, evidence? he got from me. Do you have any evidence yeah. that Christian Now notice the interruption, notice the rudeness. I can't make this man stop. You are the one who has to stop him. No, Otherwise he'll just behave like this continuously. No, now my point, no, don't, 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 don't. Right, so sister, so sister. Right, now notice the controlling behavior that's happening right now. You've approached me for a conversation and people are now trying to interrupt that conversation because they know that I'm a danger to Islam. Because danger. they wow. know wow. that I have made wow. criticisms of Islam that wow. they cannot Can't answer, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. 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 So, no, I'm not saying you're feeling threatened. I'm just pointing out his rude behavior. You approach me for a conversation and now he's trying to interrupt that conversation. And he's Bring trying to priest. impose himself on this conversation. Sure, Bring your priest you along yeah, with you. Yeah, go on, you ask your question. Thomas Aquinas theology, because that's what my stepdad follows. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I don't follow it in the sense of I think that he is the only doctor of the church. However, I am happy to go along with Thomas Aquinas theology. So if you've got any questions on that. No, no, I don't. Okay, then, then yeah. me and you can't debate because right. that's like a core thing. For me. Right. So, yeah. but the problem with de the problem with divine actually gets me in trouble with some Muslims as yeah. well. But I'm allowed to have that. Right. Opinion. So, so the the problem with divine simplicity in Islam, right? For those Muslims that hold on to it, and it's not actually Sunni Muslims that hold on to divine simplicity. It's Ismailis that hold on to divine simplicity. Uh, no, I don't believe that they do. But maybe, maybe you can. They don't. They don't believe in divine simplicity. The uh, the groups of Muslims that belie, di, believe in divine simplicity are Ismailis and other minor sects of Shiism. Yeah, so you're Shia? No, I'm Sunni. Okay, but mainstream Sunni, mo mainstream Sunni Islam, mainstream Sunni Islam. Yeah, I'm aware. D d believes in the attributes and the essence of Allah. Right. Yeah. The problem. No, I'm aware, but yeah. That's mostly so, so as Christians, yeah, we believe we no, make. No, we, now, notice the interruption so and notice the rudeness. Remember, sister, you, you approach sister, me for the conversation. You. you have you to ask, ask him to stop being rude and stop yeah, imposing himself. You have to ask him to stop being rude and imposing himself. You. Yeah. So, so, sister, in in response to your Orthodox Protestant Catholic Muslim opinions. Right. So, so the point is, Which one? yeah, uh, uh, the Christians, Christians believe in the essence, what energy, distinction, except for those Christians that believe in divine Jesus simplicity. However, Jesus the Christianity God, that I follow accepts that both of oh, these the descriptions of God are valid descriptions of but God. one is correct, another is incorrect. Yeah, one of them, well, Which one is I, I mean, I would even go for, as far as to say that maybe someone in the future comes up with a third description that is even more accurate. Yeah, because all of these 
these theologies are just people trying to explain what they think the truth is, which is why I don't care if a good idea comes from an Ishmaeli or a Sunni or a Shia, yeah. because at the end of the day, everyone's working the hardest yeah. to... The um, good thing is, sister... No, don't let him interrupt, sister. Group, don't let him interrupt. Do, don't let him do interrupt. You were making a point and I was trying to listen to your point. So but what was the point that you were trying to make? Yeah, about the root of Christianity. The so Will you stop I interrupting her? I don't see anywhere saying be an Ishmaeli, be a Sunni, be Thank an Ash'ari, be a Mutazalite, be a this, be a that. So if an Ishmaeli makes a point about the God essence distinction that I agree with, I don't right. feel afraid to take it. Exactly. So end, it's one of the things that we have to understand. Now notice his rudeness now. I'm talking to you in a conversation that you asked for and now he's interrupting me. You don't believe it. So but my point to you, sister, is firstly you have to ask him to behave with manners. Like he's being rude. Right. So now now because the thing is, can you hear what I'm actually saying? Can you hear what I'm actually saying? Can you hear what can can I actually can you hear what I'm actually saying? So the point is the point is there's a rela the relationship between the philosophy of language and our descriptions of God. Christians have an understanding about the way we define doctrines, like in um, Thomas Aquinas' Summa Theologia, in which it is like a, a map to a landscape. The landscape is the reality. The landscape is the reality of God's existence. The statements like the Summa Theologia are a map describing that man's landscape. Now, in that context, some maps are going to be more accurate than others. Some, 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 I'm, I've just got to move forward because you allowed him to interrupt. No, I'm saying so, the camera. So he doesn't yeah, want to be in the camera. Yeah, well, but side. he's interrupting, so I've got to move forward so you can hear me. And because you won't ask him to stop interrupting, that's why I've got to come forward so you can hear me. Now, if you stop him from interrupting, I don't have to be as close. Well, in, in, that, in that case, I, I, I have to move forward. So the point is, the, 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 the descriptions of doctrine that we find in, in, in the Christian faith are descriptions of the landscape like a map. And just as I'm sure you know, you can have multiple maps and some maps are going to be more accurate than others. And some maps are just going to be completely wrong. The completely wrong ones we call heresy and we took them away. Like Gnosticism. Like Gnosticism, like Arianism and so on. Yeah. Like, for instance, how the Muslims persecuted the Mutasilites, for instance. What about Rastafarianism? Well, they did Christians so, as a Christian, Arab countries. I don't believe that Rastafarianism is a, uh, is a part of the Christian faith. They did to so, for instance, Hali Selassie, who is the focal point of Islamic doctrine. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to talk to all you guys because she stopped listening. So, Hali Selassie is the focal point of Rastafarian religion. And Hali Selassie was an Orthodox Christian who would have rejected Rastafarianism. Rastafarianism emerges out of the pain of the black community in the Caribbean because due to slavery they were stripped of their identity and they were creating an identity through things like Rastafarianism. Okay, fair enough. So the fact that you don't believe in divine simplicity is it yeah. because you see an issue with Christianity and divine simplicity? Like you feel like Thomas Aquinas was contradicting himself? No. In a sense? That's not my reason. Okay, what was your reason? So the reason why I don't believe in divine simplicity is because I'm simply better educated in the essence energy distinction okay. and I haven't had the opportunity to sit down and really go into Thomas Aquinas's theology. However, just as I said, you know, like you can have multiple maps. So if I gave you a map of this park, yeah, that was really detailed and then someone gave you a map of this park that you find dotted around all over the place, you can use both maps to navigate around this park, yeah. but one is more accurate than another. Okay. And that's how I navigate doctrinal differences between Christians. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Because you don't know much about it, I can't really talk to you about it, but it was good to speak to you and understand. Well, it was really lovely to speak to you. What's your name, sister? Okay, I'm going to give you a book. and okay. I, I'd like to give you a gift. No, thank you. Okay, if you would ever like to come and talk to me again, feel free no, no, to, to get into it. To yeah. Brilliant. God bless you. Take care. There you go, guys. No, I haven't got mummy. So there he you go, guys, Muslims ladies and gentlemen. No, no, we're not interested. We're not interested in this child. We're not. We're not interested in this child. I will educate you. I'm not interested in this child. So what we saw, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that the Catholic Church is losing people because it doesn't teach apologetics, because it doesn't teach a firm Christian identity that people can stand upon. 
because it There's doesn't no encourage Christian Christians to take pride in their Christian forward. faith. Ladies and gentlemen, Unitarian is there. and what we've got to do, ladies Unitarian and gentlemen, debate, what, we've, what we've got to do, ladies Jesus and gentlemen, is challenge our parish man. priests, he challenge our bishops, Unitarian. challenge our pastors and our elders to teach the solidity of the soul inside the Christian as part of their discipleship. Because we lost a sister for no good reason. However, I just want to point out something. I received an email this week of a Christian who became a Muslim for the same reasons as the sister. Watch the videos on Soko Films and then return to the Christian faith. And he wrote to me this week to tell me. This very week, ladies and gentlemen, I was sat in a church with someone who converted to Islam for the polygamy, his words, not mine. He even went on Hajj and he's been inside Mecca. And he came back to being a Christian because he realized, he realized, he realized that Christianity is what gives people salvation. And notice how this pathetic troll is triggered by the you fact of my experience, show me evidence, ladies and gentlemen. Show me evidence. Notice how he's triggered. Show me Notice how he's triggered. He was a Christian. He left Christianity. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. And now he came back to Christianity. I'm going to ignore the troll. I want to encourage all of you to ignore the troll. If there's anyone that would like to ask a question or have a conversation, let me know. I'm figuring you're standing there. Right. So, brother. I do want to. I do want to. I do want to have I'm a conversation with you, no, no. but I promise this, brother. Now, notice. Do you want to listen? I'm talking to you. Look at his behaviour. Look at his behaviour. So let's stand close, because then he can't. So, I'm. A, I'm going to have a debate with you. I will have a debate with you today if you stay. But I promise the. I promise the Unitarian brother a debate earlier. So I need to give him a debate first. Before the debate, everything. How have you been? You I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm alright. Good. It's good to see you again. Likewise. Glad you're doing well. Let me debate this, brother. It might take an hour, a bit longer. Get yourself a coffee. Okay, and then we can con have a debate ourselves. All right. Okay. I promise you a debate. I'm delivering. Let's go over here. Ignore the trolls, guys. Ignore the trolls. <laughs> Super, man. Um, that's not, I'm not reading to the...